In this lesson we're going to look at the manufacture of steel from cast iron and look at some of its uses. So we've got some cast iron here which has come from the blast furnace, it's in its molten state. And this cast iron will contain about 4% carbon. Now the carbon has come from the coke used in the blast furnace process. Okay, so this comes from the coke. And as a result, the cast iron with this percentage of carbon will tend to be quite hard, but quite brittle. As an example, you can see this in this old blacksmith's anvil. Okay, It's a hard material, which is just what you want if you're going to hammer things on an anvil. Okay, You want it to be hard, but as you can see, bits of the anvil have got fractured, and that's due to the fact that the carbon makes the cast iron brittle. Okay, So a typical common day use for cast iron is to make manhole covers for drains but if we want to make the iron useful we've got to remove this carbon from its structure and when we do so we make something called steel so we're going to have a brief look at the steel manufacturing process to convert the cast iron to steel something called a converter is used okay so this is a steel converter we've got the cast iron from the blast furnace and what's going to happen is that oxygen is going to be pumped into this liquid iron. Okay, so you've got oxygen being pumped into the molten cast iron under high pressure. And as it does so, the oxygen is going to react with the carbon present in the iron to produce carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide gases, which are going to exit the converter here. Okay, so here we've got the waste gases. And let's just make a note of that. Okay, so what's happening here is you've got a reaction between carbon and oxygen. And we're going to get carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide produced. So, as we're going to see in a minute, the type of steel produced in this process depends upon the percentage of carbon that is removed from this molten cast iron in the converter. Okay, and this will be controlled by the amount of oxygen which is allowed to react with the carbon in this molten cast iron. So in the steel manufacturing process, the amount of carbon that reacts with the oxygen is controlled. Okay, so once the correct percentage of carbon is present in the molten iron here, what will happen is the converter will be tipped almost to a horizontal position and this is a tap here and the tap will be opened and then the molten iron with the correct percentage of carbon present can then be removed and allowed to solidify into the type of steel that is being produced in this particular case. Okay, so let's have a look at the different types of steel that can be obtained from this steel converter. And the type of steel, as I said earlier, depends on the percentage of carbon that is present in its structure. Okay, so the first type is wrought steel, and that contains 0% carbon, so all of the carbon has been removed. This is quite a soft steel, and therefore quite malleable. But it's not as hard or strong as the other types of steel which we'll look at, and so is no, not really very useful for structural purposes. It is, however, useful for ornamental work. You can bend it and shape it easily, for example, into wrought iron fencing. The next type of steel is called mild steel or low carbon steel, and that has a percentage carbon of up to about 0.25%. That's harder and stronger than wrought steel, but still has malleable properties, which makes it useful for car manufacture, okay, car bodies. And then if we move up to high carbon steel, which is around about 1.5% carbon content, well, this is considerably harder than the mild steel and so is used, for example, for cutting tools. But you have to be careful with this type of high carbon steel because as the steel gets harder, it can also become more brittle and there can be a tendency for this type of tool to fracture. Okay, so the fourth type of steel we're gonna look at is stainless steel. 
and stainless steel is made from typically 0.15% carbon and will have typically more than about 15% chromium and nickel added to the iron. Okay, so it's an alloy of nickel, chromium and iron. We do that. So stainless steel is an alloy. And what makes it so useful is that the chromium and nickel present in the structure react with oxygen to form very thin protective oxide layers which prevents the iron in the steel from oxidizing or rusting. So one of its important uses is that of manufacture of cutlery or kitchen utensils.